Hi friends, I'm Chuck and this is my good friend Mark from New York City. And what are we doing today, Mark? Well, we've been working our way through the book of Acts uh, from the perspective of the disciple maker. And the church has uh, now moved beyond Jerusalem. And um, there's Peter there in Acts 10. He's, uh, he's on this rooftop, and God speaks to him in his powerful way. And um, so now he's, he's responding to that in this story uh, that, that we're reading here in Acts 11. He has responded to it. Now he's kind of uh, moving forward with this in Acts 11. All right. So let's take a look at the scriptures. Now the apostles and the brethren who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those who were circumcised took issue with him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began speaking and proceeded to explain to them in orderly sequence, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, an object coming down like a great sheet lowered by four corners from the sky, and it came right down to me. When I had fixed my gaze uh, on it and was observing it, I saw the four-footed animals of the earth and the wild beasts and the crawling creatures and the birds of the air. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing unholy or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a voice from heaven answered a second time, What God has cleansed no longer consider unholy. This happened three times, and everything was drawn back up into the sky. And behold, at that moment, three men appeared at the house in which we were staying, having been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to go with them uh, without misgivings. These six brethren also went with me, and we entered the man's house. And he reported to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send a Joppa and have Simon, who is also called Peter, brought here. And he will speak... Uh, he will speak words to you by which you will be saved, you and your household. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as he did upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he used to say, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, if God gave to them the same gift as he gave to us, also after believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard this, they quieted down and glorified God, saying, Well then, God has granted to the Gentiles also the repentance that leads to life. All right. So what are your observations as a disciple maker, Mark? What do you see? Uh, you know, I think I, I like Peter, first of all, um, because I resonate with Peter. We've talked about that before, but um, yeah. you know, I resonate with Peter. And I, I, I love this. This is one of just the redemptive stories of Peter. And so I think as a disciple maker, you see how God can use anybody and he can redeem anybody in Peter. But here's Peter. Um, he's recounting this story and he didn't bow to the fear of man where he could have said, well, I need to go check with other people or no, he, he has them baptized. So that's encouraging. Mm -hmm. But then in the way that he's helping um, the rest of the church to come along with this, that's what stands out to me as the, as the disciple maker. That he tells the story, so he does a good job vision casting to the church of what happened. And he, he brings in these two main authorities that um, it's really helpful for us as disciple makers to point our disciples to, and that's the word and the spirit. So yeah. uh, he's here, he's pointing to the spirit of what the Holy Spirit's done and uh, what, he's just recounting how God's moved in interacting with him, but he also brings in the word as he's pointing to um, what they would experienced with John. We've got the red letters in there that this is uh, that this is coming from the the Lord Himself, and so he's appealing to how to move forward, not on Peter's authority, but on pointing to the fact that by the word, by the Spirit, and then at the end it says they had no further objections. They praised God. And they're saying, okay, then we should move forward with this. Mm, that's good. That's good. And I think uh, your observation about, you know, Peter being the big kahuna, but he doesn't 
do things based on his own authority goes yeah. back to the word and back to the spirit just like you were saying and that's so important because i think sometimes as disciple makers we can get the big head you know and you know we got our thumbs up underneath our suspenders you know saying i got this you know <laughs> and, and that brings out another observation about the passage peter even being the prince of apostles uh, is called into account by the other leaders. And so Peter has accountability. He's not speaking ex cathedral like, you know, sometimes we, we would say people are hearing directly from God and they have no accountability. Uh, it, we got to be very careful with that especially as disciple makers, because we can get heavy handed or proud or whatever. So anything else stick out to you, Mark? You know, I think we, we talked about this in the, the last chapter we were looking at, but uh, just God, it's just God's faithfulness to, uh, to the work and just remembering that as disciple makers, helping disciples to remember that, that uh, he said all the way back in Acts 1.8, that this, the power would come on them, and then he gave them an assignment. Jerusalem, yeah. Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. And they weren't really doing the job. It was kind of stopping. Um, but God's faithful here in Acts 10 to continue to move the mission forward. And even as there's objections, um, he's helping Peter to be the guy to, to help make sure things stay on track. But, um, but just to remember, as disciple makers encourage disciples, the end of the day, this vision is God's vision, and He's going to move it forward. Um, and He wants us to be a part of it, but He's going to move it forward. Yeah, absolutely. And so He's prodding us. He's moving us forward, and changes are happening, and we're wondering, what in the world is going on? And uh, it, we have to remind ourselves as disciple makers that we're just along for the ride. You know, God's got this thing, you know. So that's a good point. I, th I think one of the other things that might be a little transparent in the last chapter and this chapter is that there's a great deal of repetition. Mm. In the first chapter, three times God has to show Peter this vision. That's right. And then there's a story in the Word, and then there's a story in this chapter. So we get the story twice. Now, modern authors might think that they're boring their readers if they tell the long story twice. But as a disciple maker, you are clued in on this technique. It's called repetition. And mm. people learn by repetition. Uh, I have that joke that there's three ways to learn repetition, blunt force trauma, and repetitive blunt force <laughs> trauma. You know? But uh, repetition is a key tool in the disciple maker's kit bag. So, all right. Any last words, Mark? Maybe it just goes with what you just said, but it's just striking me that how much uh, they tell the story over and over again, and they're just reminding themselves what story they're in. And so that kind of goes with the repetition piece, but the story is is not just about trying to give explanation to it all. If this is a story we're in, and this is this is what God is continuing to unfold. So that's, that was a good point you brought in there with the repetition. All right. Our forgetteries are better than <laughs> yes. our memories. <laughs> yeah. All right. We love you. God bless you. And until next time, keep following Jesus.